Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, as Dane so aptly talked about a few minutes ago, a covenant is a special type of promise. Uh, for people of faith, covenants are significant because God made covenants with people throughout the Bible. Um, some of the most recognized ones, uh, I think you probably could all say with me, but the covenant between God and Noah, where God promises not to destroy the world with the flood again. Uh, the covenant between God and Abraham, where God promises to give Abraham many offspring and the land of Canaan, what we know as the promised land. In addition, God promises that through Abraham's descendants, all the world will be blessed. Uh, during this time, God also made a covenant with Hagar that some people don't pay that much attention to, uh, but that covenant was that her son Ishmael's descendants would become a great nation, as well as um, Isaac's. Many years later, Abraham's descendants ended up being enslaved in Egypt, and God, through Moses, freed them and led them through the wilderness to the foot of Mount Sinai. And at this point, God made another covenant, and this one with all the people of Israelite, Israel, all the Israelites. And it's known as the Mosaic or the Sinai Covenant. And it involved the Israelites promising to be a people set apart, a people different from those around them. And their decision as a community to follow God's laws and God's ways did set them apart from the other people in the area. However, they tended to stray from God's ways and lose sight of how they were supposed to live. Um, in fact, they lost the law, the, the regulations that God had given Moses on how to be a people set apart. And that was found by King Josiah's people, the uh, passage that I just read. And it was King Josiah who had the people gather and renew and reaffirm their covenant with the Lord to hear how they were supposed to live once again and reaffirm their commitment to live by God's laws. Now, all these covenants were promises that God made with either a person or a group of people. Um, the prophet Jeremiah, however, foretold of a new covenant. And with this new, this new covenant would be different. God, in it, God promises to put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts, and everyone will know me, and I will forgive their wickedness and will never again remember their sins. Jesus Christ came to inaugurate this new covenant where with the help of the Holy Spirit we know God and can live in relationship with God. We talk about this new covenant every time we participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion where Jesus says, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This new covenant enables us to have an re authentic relationship with God. And since this relationship is based on love, it creates in us loving hearts and attitudes, and we begin to live and love like Jesus. Now, Jesus is the mediator of this covenant. On one side of it stands God, who promises to give us new life in Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves God's goodness and grace to us, showing us God's promise stands firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live our lives for ourselves, but to instead live only for Jesus Christ, because he has loved us and given his life for us. So consequently, this covenant is very important for our lives. But sometimes, like the Israelites, we can lose sight 
of God in our lives and the way God wants us to live. Thus, it's important to renew our covenant so that we remember our promises to God and recommit to living in relationship with the Lord, to putting God first in our lives. Now, John Wesley believed in the importance of covenants and implemented a covenant renewal service for the Methodist societies. This service of renewal allowed its participants to reflect on the year gone by, to confess and repent of the times they had strayed from God, and to recommit to putting God first in their lives. And it's a great way to start the year. So today we will participate in this Wesley Covenant Renewal Service. Um, now it's a little bit different from the one that John Wesley used. Uh, Jonathan Powers has updated the language so that it's somewhat more familiar to us since John Wesley wrote his Covenant Renewal Service in the 1700s. Um, now the first time I remember participating in this Covenant Renewal Service was about 12 or 15 years ago. And as I was reading the part of the congregation, the same words that are printed in your bulletin that you will be reading in just a few minutes, some of the things I was supposed to commit to made me uncomfortable. I don't know whether you've looked at the Covenant Renewal Service yet, but um, we got to some promises, and to be honest, I quit saying my part of those. Uh, it was just a little too much for me. So that morning, I only renewed parts of the covenant. Uh, and I hate to admit it, but I wasn't too keen on saying that I was okay being put to suffering or to being laid aside for God. Being empty or brought low wasn't really high on my to-do list for the new year. But even though I wasn't ready to commit to every sentence every phrase in this covenant. It did make me sit up and take notice. And at the end of the service, I took that bulletin home with me. And I read through that covenant renewal service over and over again for the next few weeks. I wrestled with the promises that I was supposed to make. And as I did... I realized that God wasn't necessarily planning to bring me low or lay me aside, thankfully, um, but that God wanted me to know that if something like that happened in the upcoming year or any time in my life, that God would be with me in it. So as I came to that real realization, I was able to commit to this covenant even though some of those promises still cause me to pause when saying them. But I think that's okay. Because what God wants from all of us is honesty. An honest and authentic relationship with the Lord. God doesn't want us to just go through the motions because that's what we're supposed to do. God wants us to be really committed to a relationship with the Lord. So what I want for us today in this covenant renewal service is honesty. I hope that we will all agree with what's in the covenant and say it. But if you can't right now, that's okay. Don't. It's better to be honest. But I would urge you to take the bulletin home with you. Or if you're watching online, Print it out from our website and read the covenant. Think about it. Pray about it. Wrestle with it if you need to. Till you can get to the point where you can honestly make that commitment to God. That's my prayer for all of us. Because God wants a committed relationship with us that involves our whole heart not just parts of it. And this renewal service is a good way to think about that and recommit ourselves to God in this new year. Thanks be to God. And now if you will join me 
in the confession found printed in your bulletin. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ, but sometimes we fall short. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Loving God, you have set forth the way of life through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you love dearly. We shamefully confess that we have been slow to learn of him and have been reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us, but we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our friends, but we have passed by them. We have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your unchanging love. We now confess to you our sins. Please forgive us for the poverty of our worship, for the selfishness of our prayers, for our inconsistency and unbelief, for the ways we neglect fellowship and your grace, for our hesitation to tell others about Christ, for the ways we deceive others. Forgive us when we waste time and when we misuse the gifts you have given us. Forgive us for when we have made excuses for the wrong things we have done and we, we have purposefully avoided responsibility. Forgive us that we have, un, we have been unwilling to overcome evil with good and that we have not been ready to carry our cross. Forgive us that we have not allowed your love to work through us to help others and that we have not made their suffering our own. Forgive us for those times when instead of working for unity, we made it hard for others to live with us because of our lack of forgiveness, inconsiderate judgment, and quick criticism. Forgive us for when we have not tried to reconcile with others and when we have been slow to seek redemption. Forgive us also for these sins that we silently confess to you now. Now the good news, God, the Father of all mercies, is faithful to cleanse us from our sins and restore us to Christ's image. Praise and glory be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us gathered here before the Lord now in covenant commit ourselves to Christ as his servants let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable, but some are difficult and disgraceful. Others are contrary to both. In some, we please both Christ and ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Let me be your servant. Let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I give myself completely to your will. The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. We accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. I am not my own. I am yours alone. 
Make me into what you will. Rank me with those whom you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. Christ is Savior to those who are His true servants. He is the source of salvation to those who obey. To be His servant is to consent fully to His will. Christ accepts nothing less. Christ will be all in all, or He will be nothing. Now confirm this truth in Holy Covenant. Make it a reality in your life in these three ways. First, set apart time in your day more than once to be spent alone with the Lord. Seek to perceive God's special care for you and gracious acceptance of you. Carefully think through the words of this covenant and its conditions. Examine your heart. Even if you have freely given your life to Christ, name the sins in your life. Reflect on whether you are willing to choose Christ's holy laws and strict commands. Be sure you are clear in all of these so you do not lie to God. Second, Uphold a serious spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Do not trust in your own strength and power, but rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength. In this way, He will empower you to keep your promise. Fourth, be determined to be faithful. You have given your heart and life to God. You have opened your mouth to dedicate yourself to the Lord. With God's power, never go back to your former way of living. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with God. Fall on your knees, lift your hands, and open your hearts. My righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me now as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness when I have not done your will. You promise mercy if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you rid yourself of every idol in your life. From the bottom of my heart, I here and now renounce every idol in my life, covenanting with you that I will not commit any known sin. By turning against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch for any temptation that will lead me away from you. Through Jesus Christ, God offers to be your God again, if you allow God to be. Before all heaven and earth, I here and now acknowledge you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as my Lord and God. I vow to give all of myself, body, and soul to be your servant and to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Jesus Christ is the way and means to God. God has given us Jesus as the mean and ways to salvation. Jesus, I here and now accept you and the new and living way. I join myself in covenant with you. 
I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. With all my power, I accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. Jesus, I here and now make this covenant with you and accept whatever comes in life. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death will separate me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I here and now willingly take on your yoke and burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I accept them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising I will strive to order my whole life around your direction. I will not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows you, even the thoughts of your heart. O oh God, you know that we have made this covenant today in sincerity, without deceit or reluctance. If you find anything false in us, guide us and help us to set it right. And now glory be to you, God the Father. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my God and Father, Glory be to you, God the Son. You have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit. By your almighty power, you have turned my heart from sin to God. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my comforter and guide. O mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. You are mine, and I am yours. So be it. May this covenant that I have made here on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen.